the advice. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening Philippines, mga gabi sa Tubog Mindanao, Visaya, Sugsa Luzon. Ako po si Eric Espina, ito ang inyong republika. Nasa sentro po rin po ng ating usapin ang uh, uh, nasa headlines. Uh, hindi talaga natin maiwasan itong uh, ano bang klaseng uh, uh, matatawag nating political entity, ang uh, Bangsa Moro political entity. At uh, sa mga susunod po nating mga episodes ay tututukan po natin to dahil mahalagang usapin po ito na kailangan himayin. Hindi lamang ng mga taong nag-iisip bagkos ay pati po ng masang Pilipino upang uh, matikman nila at manamnam nila kung ano ang kahalagahan nito, kung ano ang posibleng mangyari, lalo't hindi natin maunawaan ang usaping ito. Kaya sa gabing ito ay... Uh, Inibitahan po natin ang chairman ng NATPIL. Uh, alamin natin ano ibig sabihin ng NATPIL, ano itong grupo na ito. Uh, walang iba kung hindi si Ferdy Passion. Okay. Uh, good evening uh, to all the televiewers and to you, Eric, yeah. uh, my idol. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman. Uh, well, the NATPIL stands for uh, the Nationalist Filipinos for uh, oh, uh, against foreign intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the nation now is uh, at a grave danger. And so, all patriots are called upon to uh, stand up and be counted and not allow our nation to disintegrate because this is the nation for whom, uh, for which uh, Rizal and all our great heroes shed their blood. So, we must not allow their uh, blood to be wasted and uh, just go to the waste can. We must uh, take care of this country. Even if we are to uh, fight for it, uh -huh. we must do so. But uh, of course, as long as we can uh, get uh, what we want through peaceful means, then uh -huh. uh, we will do so. Uh -huh. Not feel, no? Uh, kontra kayo sa mga pakikialam ng uh, mga banyagang bansa. Ganun yes, no? uh, particularly uh, what is happening now in the South. With regards to the uh, Mindanao uh, issue, mm -hmm. ang parating sinasabi ng mga dating presidente natin, it is an internal affair uh -huh. uh, which, uh, for which the uh, other countries should not interfere. Uh -huh. And uh, this is an international principle, uh -huh. non-interference in the internal affairs of a sovereign country. Uh -huh. And uh, we view Malaysia particularly uh -huh. as a hostile country. Uh -huh. Why? Because uh, we have a history with Malaysia. If you would remember, uh, Malaysia took Sabah illegally uh -huh. from uh, the Philippines. Because Sabah, uh, if, you, if you will read the history, uh -huh. uh, the Sultan of Brunei ceded Sabah to the Sultan of uh, Sulu. Sulu yes. Because the Sultan of Sulu sent forces to help the Sultan of Brunei was a rebellion. Correct. In gratitude, the uh, Sultan of Brunei ceded Sabah to the Sultan of Sulu. Now, a, a, uh, the North Borneo Company uh, leased mm -hmm. or rented uh, Sabah from the Sultan of Sulu. And, uh, but however, when uh, Malaysia got its independence from Britain, mm -hmm. uh, North Borneo, the British North Borneo Company, being a British company, uh, ceded, uh, illegally ceded uh, Sabah to Malaysia mm -hmm. without asking the permission of the Sultan of Sulu. Mm -hmm. And so, the Sultan of Sulu, in order to recover what was uh, stolen by the British and the Malaysians, uh, ceded the mm -hmm. Sabah 
-hmm. to the Republic of the Philippines during the time of President Macapagal. Mm -hmm. And uh, President Macapagal uh, tried to uh, get Saba back for the Philippines through uh, peaceful means, particularly through the International Court of Justice. Mm -hmm. But uh, since the Malaysians uh, uh, knew the caliber of uh, si, uh, Arturo Tolentino and uh, Jovito Salonga, mm -hmm. natakot sila. They, uh, they did not allow uh, International Court of Justice jurisdiction over mm -hmm. the, the matter. And the, as we all know, the International Court of Justice demands that uh, the two parties to mm -hmm. the question should submit themselves. Otherwise, the ICJ cannot gain uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And so we view, uh, we view Malaysia as a very hostile country, mm -hmm. an enemy country in fact. And yet, uh, the president, uh, we are surprised that the president <laughs> uh, allowed Malaysia to... Uh, to do to uh, demand uh, mm -hmm. to to play uh, everything and uh, it, the prime minister himself was there in Malacañang during Third the party signing. mediator yes and mm -hmm. this is not a mediator this is a uh, very interested party this is a hostile country uh -huh. in fact and uh, we should not have allowed Malaysia to uh, uh, interfere you know why uh -huh. uh, they they insisted that uh, the first of all the uh, Bangsa Moro should be called Bangsa Moro. Okay. Uh, when in fact, during the Tripoli Agreement uh -huh. and the 1996 Final Agreement, even Chairman Nurmi Swari himself uh -huh. uh, uh, agreed that uh -huh. uh, this term will no longer be used. Why? Uh -huh. Because President Marcos and President Ramos will never allow it. Why? Because Bangsa, as we all know, uh -huh. connotes nation state. Correct. And uh, if there are two nation states in this country, uh, we cannot be one country anymore. Uh, Ferdi, ulitin mo lang yun. Ano? Para you run by me, sabi ng Amerikano, run that by me again so that uh, madinig uli ng mga tao. No? Si, Marco, uh, si, si, si Ramos mismo at si Miswari alam niya na hindi pwedeng gamitin itong term na ito. Since 1996. Yes, 1976 with Marcos, 1996 with President Ramos. Uh, Chairman Noor was uh, very reasonable in that... Uh, Kumayag. Yes, and in fact, uh, the Constitution specifically names it Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao. Nowhere in the Constitution can you find Bangsamoro. Okay. Nowhere in the Constitution can Tama. you find sub-state. Tama. There's no such thing as a sub-state. Uh, okay. A sub-state, for the information of uh, Dean Leonin, uh -huh. the so-called dean of uh, <laughs> the College of Dole, the University of the Philippines, uh -huh. I don't know if he knows that a sub-state is just a prelude uh -huh. to becoming a state. Okay. There is no sub-state that will stay a sub-state forever. Correct. And uh, there is no sub-state in the Constitution. It is unconstitutional. <laughs> the term Bangsamoro is unconstitutional. Maybe what uh, he is thinking about is an infant state. <laughs> well, waiting to mature, you yes. know, eh, eh, to waiting for the Malaysians to go in and prevent okay. the armed forces. You know what happened to Kosovo? Uh -huh. This is uh, I always I always like to uh, mention Kosovo and uh, uh -huh. and uh, East Timor, which okay. is now Timor Leste. Yeah. Uh, the so-called international contact group, the uh -huh. ICG, which to me sounds like mafiosi, uh -huh. uh, uh, insisted. The United, the United States and the NATO countries insisted uh, that uh, Kosovo and Timor first be given some sort of a sub-state status. Okay. And when uh, Yugoslavia allowed it, when Indonesia allowed it, what did Kosovo and Timor Leste <laughs> do? Uh -huh. Immediately after Kosovo declared independence, immediately after the sub-state status, the Timor Leste declared independence. Mm -hmm. And what did the international contact group that was supposed to be friendly and neutral did? Mm -hmm. They immediately recognized the independence <laughs> of Kosovo. They immediately recognized the independence of uh, Timor Leste. Uh -huh. uh, what are these countries now that are interfering in the international contact group? You have, we have Turkey, which is a member of the NATO, okay. uh, the United States, uh -huh. which is uh, thousands of miles away from yes. Mindanao. Yes. Uh, Japan, yes. which is oil-starved. Uh -huh. uh, we have Australia, which represents the British crown. Yes. And uh, we have Malaysia uh -huh. and uh, other countries. Why, why are we going to allow these people? You know, uh, to us... Uh, why, do you, why, why do you think we are internationalizing a domestic and yes. internal affair? I think uh, the president has already cut his ties from uh, our... Uh, long-standing policy 
of uh, keeping our uh, in, uh, territorial integrity uh, safe. Uh, the president is now uh, willing to uh, play with fire and uh, he's not thinking uh, far ahead into the future. He just wants a, uh, uh, with all due respect to the president, he just wants to have a, an achievement before his term ends. A legacy. A legacy, but this, this, this will be his legacy. <laughs> I, I sure hope it will not be his legacy because he will be known in history as the worst president uh -huh. if this is his legacy. Why? Because, first of all, the agreement includes Palawan. Uh -huh. uh, let us not let, let all the people know about that. Mm. Uh, once uh, the Bangsamoro, uh, which the uh, president himself has already recognized as such, Bangsamoro, mm. another country, another nation state, uh, Bangsa, uh, declares independence and America uh, and other countries like Malaysia recognizes its independence mm. and sends quote-unquote peacekeeping forces. Mm. This is what happened in Timor-Leste and uh, Kosovo, so don't tell me that this is just a conspiracy theory. Mm. Once they uh, send peacekeeping forces there, the armed forces and the uh, Philippine National Police can no longer enter. And another thing, mm. before all this hula balu, the Philippine government uh, ratified the treaty regarding the International mm -hmm. Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this? Uh, under the terms of the International Criminal Court Treaty, any soldier or policeman mm -hmm. that uh, violates international uh, laws mm -hmm. uh, can be uh, hailed to that court mm -hmm. and be charged with uh, war crimes. Correct, correct. And this is what happened to the Yugoslavs. This is what happened to the, some Indonesian officers. Correct, correct. So if the international contact group, United States, Britain, Australia, Japan, etc., uh -huh. recognizes the independence of Bangsamoro, then, uh, and they send the uh, peacekeeping forces under the banner of the United Nations, for uh -huh. example, uh -huh. and uh, our uh, generals and colonels, and uh, other soldiers try to uh, stop the secession. Yes. Uh, they can be, you know, they can be arrested and uh -huh. uh, hailed to the International Court of Justice and probably be hanged as uh, war criminals. Ferdi, let me ask you. We're talking here about an issue like Saba. How come we do not hear this kind of discourse in the public domain? It's not given emphasis in the newspapers. The government's well, President Aquino says the claim, Philippine claim to Sabah is dormant. But how come this historical narrative, what, is it purposely avoided? I, are we trying to forget this? It's out of the table. Why is it not made or, or, or talked about in public? The problem, I think, is that uh, this administration uh, is very... Uh, uh, short reigns in its uh, views and does not have a sense of history and uh, probably it lacks patriotism uh, with all due respect. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there were a lot of Filipinos uh, who died uh, uh, trying to recover Saba and uh, uh, we just, we, we don't want this to be forgotten because as a state, as a self-respecting nation, mm -hmm. a member of the United Nations, one of the oldest republics in Asia. Uh, we should not forget uh, to uh, uh, try to recover this uh, national patrimony of ours. Correct. Imagine, uh, uh, Saba, uh, uh, the Malaysians now are uh, getting 1 million barrels of oil per day okay. in Saba, and they are earning 75 million US dollars per day. And together with the other wealth of Saba, including timber, $150 million per day. Uh -huh. uh, should we just allow this to go to, to waste? Uh, I, I believe that, uh, well, first of all, the president's mother, uh, I question her, uh, her action in the 1987 constitution. Uh -huh. Uh, we all know that the Constitutional Commission which drafted that Constitution were all appointed mm -hmm. by the President. What and you're saying is they didn't have any mandate. They, yes, they did not have any mandate and yet they dropped our claim uh, to Saba by, uh, by erasing the phrase in our national territory uh, and all other territories belonging to the Philippines by historic right or legal title. Mm -hmm. what, ha what right do they have uh, to do that? 
Anyway, according to Senator, uh, uh, why do you think that happened? I don't I, know. Can, can you uh, at least, uh, I, I, do you have any uh, idea? Because uh, we may not have any idea. You might know something we don't. Well, uh, the Malaysians, of course, uh, may have probably infiltrated the uh, Malacanang at that time. And uh, are, are you saying that they had the Malaysians have good relations? Had good relations with the. The, the, the post uh, Marcos uh, administration? Yes, uh, very good relations because uh, remember that uh, President Cory was, uh, was the, uh, wa was the uh, widow of uh, the late Senator Benigno Aquino and Senator Benigno Aquino was the one who uh, um, you know, uh, exposed, exposed to yeah. the public and to the whole world including to Malaysia and the United States and to the British the plan of the Republic of the Philippines to invade Sabah. But uh, the plan was uh, legal. Why? Because the, there was no other way. There was no other recourse. The, the Malaysians refused to, uh, to uh, let the issue be under the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice. And uh, as a nation, we have the right to, if we have the means, we have the right to claim what is rightfully ours, mm -hmm. even by force of arms, because we are a nation state, we are a republic. What do you know about the, the operation, supposedly, uh, Ferdi? I mean, if, if you can contribute, um, were there plans to take over Sabah? Yes, uh, it was called uh, Operation Merdeka, and uh, some... Uh, of our relatives were uh, even involved, and uh, some. Your, your relatives? You're saying your relatives? Yes, uh, I have uh, relatives who were with the uh, armed forces, and uh, in fact, an uncle of mine was with the Philippine Navy, and uh, some of our uh, the good friends of my uncle and my father were also with that uh, uh, Operation Merdeka. I will no longer mention their names because they are now uh, businessmen trying to live uh, silent lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people are telling me that uh, uh, we should not just uh, uh, surrender our uh, claim to Saba because uh, it, it, is, it is ours. It is ours because the, the Sultan of Sulu ceded it to the Republic of the Philippines, hoping that the Republic of the Philippines will do something about it. Imagine how many schools, how many, how many persons now uh, with uh, sickness and disease can be uh, helped by the income coming. And imagine uh, there are many domestic helpers in 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 Saba, in Malaysia now in Sabah, uh, Filipinos. And uh, what is worse is that the native-born Sabah, Sabah, Sabahans. Uh, and the Tausugs. Those, yeah, yeah, the Tausugs who were born there, even their uh, ancestors, they are now being uh, uh, sent away. Uh -huh. and, and in fact, they are, many deported. of them They're being deported. deported. They are now, uh, many of them are now in Sambuanga. Uh -huh. And because the Malaysian authorities say that they are Filipinos. Okay. So if these native-born uh, Sabaans are uh, the Filipinos, therefore Saba belongs to the Philippines. Uh -huh. If we follow the logic of the Malaysians. Now, we think that... Uh, the Malaysians are now orchestrating this uh, Bangsa Moro so that the Sabah will be forgotten. And uh, we believe that, uh, uh, with all due respect, that since it is only Chairman Noor uh, that is uh, vocal in uh, the, uh, calling upon our uh, brother uh, Filipino Muslims to do everything they can to recover Sabah mm -hmm. for the Philippines, I believe that Chairman Noor is the uh, proper person to talk to and not the MILF. Why? Because the MILF have not uh, issued any statement regarding Sabah. And uh, the <laughs> MILF is uh, very, uh, very much uh, quiet. Close, closely related, not only quiet, but closely re uh, related to the to the Malaysians. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, when, uh, when uh, President Arab declared an all-out war, and in just one week, uh, we, the armed forces was able to uh, get all these, uh, these camps. July, uh, July of 2000, Camp yes, Abu Bakar uh, fell. Uh, with all due respect, uh, some leaders of the MLF went to Malaysia. Yeah, Hashim Salamat fled to Malaysia. Uh, yes, and, uh, but uh, when Chairman Noor uh, declared the rebellion against uh, during the incumbency of President Gloria Arroyo, and uh, his forces were uh, overwhelmed by the armed forces of the Philippines, and he was forced to flee to to Saba. He was arrested by the Malaysian authorities and immediately <laughs> deported back to the Philippines, uh -huh. and uh, President Arroyo imprisoned him. Uh -huh. So. 
Uh, I think the Malaysian hand is very apparent here, and uh, we should, uh, we should as Filipinos, not allow this to happen. Ferdi, let me ask you, who is the real Filipino Muslim here? Or let's even use, let's go as far as, who is the real Bangsamoro here? Uh, Nur Miswari, who is saying we should recover Sabah? Or Hashim Salamat, who says we should create a Bangsamoro territory? Quiet about the... Filipino Bangsamoro in Sabah. I think, you know, uh, <laughs> if we are really going to study history, all of us are Bangsamoros. Okay. You know why? Because uh, even uh, Professor Saide and uh, Chodoro Agoncillo, uh, noted historians, say that uh, the ten Bornean datus, mm -hmm. uh, originally from the Sultanate of Brunei, uh, were the ones who populated Luzon and the Visayas. Uh -huh. That they were Muslims. We were Muslims before the arrival of the Spaniards. Oh. And uh, the Sultan, Sultan of Brunei and the Sultan of Sulu are uh, in fact uh, relatives. Uh -huh. And uh, when the, it just so happens that when the uh, Westerners came, uh, the Moros of uh, Luzon and Visayas were converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I really am, uh, I think this is a comedy, the, the concept of ancestral domain. Why? Mm -hmm. For me, if I am a no, uh, if I am a Maguindanawan or a Tausug, mm. I will not allow uh, a small part of the Philippines to be my ancestral domain. Mm. I want the entire Philippines to be my ancestral domain. That's why we have now uh, Filipino Muslims in Lawag. We have now a, a sizable uh, population of Filipino Muslims in Tugigaraw, and even in my ancestral domain of Quiapo. In fact, when you do have to be straight about it. Your ancestral domain is your entire country. Yes. Because it is the land of your birth. That's right. And it is the people that you should embrace. Yes. Everyone, regardless of religion, and this is, this is the community that you belong to. Imagine what will happen to the Philippines if, uh, if, if this thing happens and all, suddenly all Filipino Muslims become citizens of, uh, of this Bangsamoro. Huh? Uh, if it is a sub-state, will they, will they become sub-citizens sub of the republic? Or are we going to send them back and deport them all to Mindanao because uh, Luzon and Visayas are no longer their ancestral domain? Mm -hmm. That is a silly, silly uh, idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is a foreign idea injected into us by the Malaysians, injected into us by the Americans. There's uh, no such thing as an ancestral wh domain. Why are the Malaysians still meddling in our affairs? They already have Sabah anyway. Well, so, so why do they continue to still to meddle there? If, if I will follow your, your, your theory, no? why do they continue to meddle into our internal affairs? Anyway, they're holding on to Sabah. They're making money out of it. So what, what is there for them? Uh, because the Malaysians have a, uh, some sort of a central intelligence agency that uh, looks far beyond the future, uh, which sadly I think we do not have. Because uh, now they are enjoying Sabah, but... The, uh, who knows, some, sometime in the future, uh, the Philippines might have a president like Marcos again, like Macapagal again, or somebody like Hugo Chavez, uh, who strengthens the armed forces and uh, revives the claim to Saba. And uh, again, we, for example, in the future, we may have again such uh, brilliant lawyers as Salonga and uh, Arturo, Arturo Tolentino. Could it be possible that one of the greatest fears of Malaysia is for the Philippines to eventually unite? or for Christians and Muslims to actually embrace each other and realize that we are not the enemy. Precisely. But, but, but the enemy is outside our borders. Precisely. I, I, is that the kind of awakening, do you think, that the Malaysians are scared of? And that is why they would rather continue this kind of uh, a sponsored rebellion? Precisely. You, that, that's the, you got it exactly. <laughs> and, and it's now beginning because okay. uh, Chairman Noor is now... Uh, I think uh, beginning to understand that uh, we are better off as uh, one country and uh, I think uh, by, uh, by not insisting on the term Bangsa Mora, I think uh, he's a reasonable man. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, by the way, there are a lot of Filipino Muslims who do not view the MILF as properly representing them. Okay. Uh, where we must remember that the MILF they, all their leaders have not been elected. Mm -hmm. They gained their uh, so-called uh, quote-unquote uh, mandate through the force of arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, all of, uh, not all Filipino Muslims uh, believe that uh, uh, they should just 
uh, be separated and just stay in that uh, ancestral domain. In fact, many of them have voted with their feet. They are now in Lawag, they are now in Tugigaraw, they are now in Quiapo. They consider themselves as Filipinos. You, you know, Jerry, many of the, well, great presidents in history and even locally are presidents that usually increase the size of their territory. Yes. Uh, you also have good presidents that are able to defend their territory. Of course, the worst kind of president is those that will lose some of their territory. Yeah, I, do you agree with that? Yes, not only that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the president has sworn to uh, okay. keep that integr the territorial integrity of the republic safe and uh, the sovereignty of the republic uh, 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 protected. And uh, if he continues with this, I'm afraid, with all due respect to the president, he will be open to impeachment. And... Uh, uh, he, the charges against him will be, number one, betrayal of public trust, number two, the high crime of treason, mm -hmm. and number three, culpable violation of the Constitution. Okay, I'll stop you there. We're going to pause for a few reminders. And uh, Ferdi, uh, you, you will continue with what you were saying, but one point uh, that I'd like to ask you is uh, the, the, the framework uh, with the Bank Samoro is a political uh, commitment. Can that form the basis for... Uh, an impeachment uh, as the crimes that you have cited uh, when Republica returns. <laughs>